Before we uh, welcome today's special guest, I have some, uh, some business matters to go over. First, as everybody hopefully by now knows, Impact Wrestling this morning announced that a major press conference and public Q&A for Slammiversary will be held on Monday, June 4th, starting at 10 a.m. at the world-renowned Real Sports Bar in downtown Toronto. The public is invited to attend and will be given a chance to participate, plus there will be limited time afterwards for autographs and photos with the Impact Stars. We also would like to virtually invite all of the media from around the world to participate. As this uh, morning, we announced the press conference, uh, the appearances will include former multi-time world champion Austin Aries, Mr. Impact Wrestling Moose, former five-time knockouts champion Madison Rain, the play-by-play announcer each week for Impact, Josh Matthews, and Toronto's own Gail Kim, of course, a member of the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Media, if you would like to participate in the press conference, feel free to tape a question and email it over to me. I think everybody should have my email. Uh, be sure to include your name and your media outlet and specify who the question is directed to. I would suggest you wait until after next week's Impact to send your question so you know exactly where things are at in Impact on the road to Slammiversary. Again, I'll remind you next week uh, on the teleconference, but plan to send me your videos via email next week after Impact. Uh, one other business matter before we get going. Uh, as I ask each and every week on the teleconference, please limit your questions to one and one only. And please do not get back in queue to ask another question until I say it's okay. There are a lot of people on the calls and sometimes people won't get the question answered because people are asking uh, multiple questions. So thank you for that. And with that said, let me uh, open up the line here and uh, welcome our special guest, as I just mentioned, a five-time former Knockouts champion coming back to Impact Wrestling. Let's welcome Madison Rain. Thanks, Ross. Hello, everyone. Madison, how are things going? Welcome back. What a what a treat to see you uh, back in the fold. Going, uh, no doubt, uh, in the back of your mind, thinking that uh, you're going for a six-time Knockouts champion. You know, Ross, at this point, I never know what twists and turns my career is going to take. <laughs> um, but, yeah, absolutely. Um, having that six knockout title run, um, putting me at a tying second place of all time knockout championship victories um, would be would be awesome. That said, I got to ask you about uh, knockouts division circa 2018. Uh, diverse and obviously as arguably as powerful as it's ever been. You, know, you get you got uh, Tessa, Taya, uh, Sienna, Champion Alley, then I forget Kira Hogan. And, of course, the mystery of uh, Rosemary and Sue Young. Uh, how, how do you size up the knockouts division? I mean, I think that this group is by far the most diverse um, of any group um, of knockouts that I've been a part of um, and equally as hardworking as any. You know, in back in 2007 when this whole division was getting started, I wasn't there at the onset of it, but shortly after I came in. So I've been very fortunate to um, see many different faces and be able to, you know, get in there in the ring with um, so many different knockouts over the years. And I would say that, yeah, without a doubt, even in just being back um, for a short time, I can tell that this group is, they're young, they're hungry. Um, and they definitely feel like they've got something to prove and they're ready to make their mark in, in women's wrestling, in knockout history. I, I mean, I'm excited for them and I'm excited to kind of be on this side of it. Um, you know, when I came in in 2009, I was the Kira Hogan. I was the Tessa Blanchard. I was young and hungry and I needed to make my mark. So now that, um, you know, I never stop growing and changing, and I think that's the worst thing you can do in a business like professional wrestling. But I definitely feel like um, I'm, I'm a bit more comfortable and a bit more settled in the knockouts division. So to be able to watch all of these young up-and-comers um, really go in there and give it 100% every time that they've got a match, and you know, just to see how hungry and excited they are to be a part of something that 
in a way I helped to create. It feels really good. Well, Madison, we certainly have a lot to talk about with the uh, Knockouts Division, and we have a uh, list of media from literally around the world waiting to ask you questions. But I, I do have one final question I want to ask you, uh, <laughs> kind of away from wrestling a little bit. I think you probably know where I'm going because you and I have talked about this a lot. <laughs> you're smiling, you're laughing, because I'm going to ask you about your beloved Chicago Cubs. Well, what about them, Ross? I, I thought that... Um in our discussions prior to this teleconference that, that we agreed we would leave questions to everything um, impact specific. But go ahead and break the rules from Jump Street. Go ahead. What would you like to know about my beloved Chicago Cubs? Well, let, let, just give us a thought about 2016 the Cubs won the World Series. But I also got to ask you about last night. I mean, it's been a uh, you know an up and down year. Your thoughts? Because you, you are uh, arguably the, the biggest Cubs fan in the, in the uh, impact roster. <laughs> I mean, it's been an up and down century for them. It's not been. Um, I, I think you learn as a Cubs fan um, that if you're going to stick by them, you're, you're going to be in a heartbreak situation uh, many times. You you learn to stick in your skin a little bit. Um, but you know, a, a true Cubs fan is is there for them and rallying for them in times like last night, just as much as they are in game seven of the World Series, you know, when they when they get that final out. So, you know, I, I knew that you were gonna take that little dig after last night, fittingly, um, but but you know, I still have hope for it. I mean they're what are they, second now, third in their division? So um one loss doesn't make the season for them. All right, well I will I will give you that and with that, we will open the questions up to the media. Uh, as always, please identify yourself and your media outlet. And again, please limit it to one question and one question alone. And please remember to uh, that this is the Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference, so please direct your questions accordingly. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press Star six. Your phone to get in queue for questions. Hi, uh, my name is Ryan Cook. I'm with WrestleCast Radio over at Strongstown Media. And my question to you is, I know it's a very short time being back, but what is any significant changes between the old regime and this new regime now with Anthem Sports? Do you mean specifically with the company, not just the knockout division? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess just my question was, how, how's the feel backstage? I mean, is it, is it more of a breath of fresh air? I've heard so many positive things now with this new regime, I guess, was where I'm going. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I have... When I start thinking about my career and how long I've actually been around Impact Wrestling, um, it's both humbling and um, reminds me that I'm not 21 years old anymore. Um, but in the time that I've been with Impact Wrestling, and you know, it's no secret that the company has gone through ups and downs, much like any company would. Um, but I can say that the same feel that I, I previously spoke about within the Knockouts Division, where everyone is young and hungry. Um, and it's a feel-good environment that transcends across the entire locker room. In the time that I've been back, um, what I have experienced is absolute positivity. I've experienced this group um, of extremely talented um, wrestlers who who want to give everything that they've got to make Impact Wrestling what it once was, what it has the potential to be, um, and. Like I said, in the short time that I've been back, I've experienced nothing but positivity um, and, and motivation. And I'm really excited to see where this new regime takes things in the future. Hey, Matt. It's Sean Ross Zappa, Fightful.com. You've been in and out of Impact Wrestling uh, several times, regardless of regime. What do you think contributes to what seems like such an amicable relationship, despite whatever regime may be in charge. With me personally? Yes. 
Um, I've always tried my very best in a business that has the potential to get very dramatic, um, to always just go to work and, and remember that it doesn't feel like work. And at the end of the day, everybody who's there, everybody who's part of the company, um, they're living their dream job. I mean, we, we wake up every day and get to go perform and do what we love and what we've loved since we were kids. And in those moments, I mean, I'm human. I have moments where I want to bang my head against the wall at work. But in those moments, I just remind myself that this is, I'm literally living my dream job. And there's really no better um, situation to be in. Um, and, and, you know, the, the other thing that I have done in those times of, you know, I spoke of ups and downs throughout the company, in those down times, you just kind of put, um, put, you put blinders on and you mute maybe social media in the world and everybody who is trying to tell you of the demise of something that's coming um, because that's that the absolute best thing you can do. I mean, not, not just with impact, not just with wrestling, but you know, you are there and I have been there and I have seen, um, you know, what the real story is. And, and so I just put on, put on blinders and kind of try to shut out um, the negativity. And I think that maybe that's probably helped me in all of my ins and outs and backs and forces through the company. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, Madison, good morning. Um, this is Rosa Gray from V2 Wrestling out of the UK and also Impact Lounge podcast in the US. And my question is, with the knockouts division being its strongest in some time, do you think it's time to bring back the knockouts tag team title? And if so, what do you think the company can do now that they didn't do back then where it could be a, a little bit more successful? That's such a hard question for me because I, um, even in the years that I wrestled on, on the independent scene before my first time at Impact Wrestling, um, I have an affinity for and I love tag team wrestling. Um, but I think that right now it's as strong as the division is. Um, adding another element, adding another element as far as the tag team titles right now in this moment, it may not be the best timing um, because while the knockout division is incredibly talented and, I, and I've spoken to that um, quite a bit, it's not a deep roster in terms of, you know, when we had those knockout tag titles before, we had 15, 17, I don't remember exact numbers, but we had so many women, you know, and um, opportunities for, you know, like the beautiful people and Sarita and Taylor Wilde to form those teams. Um, so it made more sense at the time. I feel like with the talent that's, that we have now, it, it's best to just keep the the knockout title and then of course down the road as things progress and grow and the knockout division gets a bit deeper a bit richer and, and you know we get some some more women coming in um i think that's definitely something that could and should be visited but i believe that timing is everything and right now i don't think is the perfect time to bring those titles back definitely something to look for in the future all right so we're going to go to a uh, email question from lee med of alive radio he wants to know, how do you balance life as a wrestler, a mom, and a businesswoman? Um, I'll let you know when I figure out how it is that I continue to do it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, there's, you just have to do it. And I think that anyone who is a parent um, can attest to this, that you just, you get this super natural, super human strength about you once you become a parent. Um, and, you know, time management is essential to wearing as many different hats as what I do. Um, it's also important, and I tell my husband this often, it's important to choose your best yeses and allow yourself to say no sometimes. Um, because when your plate becomes too full, nothing gets proper attention and that's something that i have vowed to never let happen um, so i'm in a very good groove with the things that i do and the things that i choose to do 
Um, and so I think that's probably how I go about balancing everything um, and being able to give 110% to everything that I do. Hello, Madison. This is Stephanie for Still Child Magazine in UK. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Pretty fine. Um, we are talking a lot about women's revolution, but like you stated, you, you've been a part of this. Uh, when the, the knockout thrust was created and uh, things changed for women on impact wrestling, and I wanted to have your, your thoughts on um, the evolution of the evolution of women, if I can say it like that, uh, in this business. Thank you very much. Uh, the evolution of women's wrestling. I mean, when you started, um, it was already a revolution on impact because um, girls were not considered as eye candies and considered as wrestlers. And but it was in 2008. We are now in 2018, and uh, we are still hearing about the world revolution um, mm -hmm. in this. 10 years, um, what, what, for you, what did you, what did you see as a revolution and as an evolution for the, the female wrestlers in the business? Sure. So, um, this is one of the things where, where I feel like, um, social media tries to kind of manipulate a lot of the things that people say. So I'm going to choose my words here very carefully, but as it relates to, women's revolution or women's evolution and in current times I feel like so many people try to grab at that title and grab at that and say well no I did it first no we're doing it first no we're doing it better the bottom line for me is this I have loved professional wrestling my entire life and, and that's a love that started when I was six years old and I was watching wrestling and I was watching women like Alundra Blaze and Bull Nakano so to say that the women's revolution or, or that women's wrestling is just now starting to evolve, I don't think is giving proper credit to the women who paved the way and, and laid that foundation for us. Um, because like I said, when I was 10 years old and I was, I was watching wrestling, there were women and, and they were doing something to captivate me beyond just, just being beautiful. Um, so I think that you know, like with, with anything over the years, it evolves and changes. I think that right now is a time in women's wrestling where um, if you can't hang in there with the best of the best, you're, you're not going to um, make your statement. Um, and, and I think that that's a good thing because it forces women to, especially in a time where women are fighting for equality across the board in, in every avenue, not just with professional wrestling, um, or sport, but you know, we're all we're trying to even that that bar that you know maybe men have been a little bit higher in, on the food chain as far as speaking specifically about wrestling. I think that um, the women of today are very similar to the women of yesterday. It's just it, it's a bit more of a focal point now. Um, which is something that I'm proud of. I feel like in, in a small way I've been able to contribute to because like you said, the knockout division in 2017 was something very special um, and something that maybe started to really lay the groundwork for what women's dressing is today. But I think it would be a shame and a discredit to the women several years ago who started something that we're able now to continue and build on. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to go to an uh, email question from Dirk Das. And I actually like this question a lot. I certainly look forward to your answer on this one. Who would be your first few picks for a softball game featuring the Impact roster? Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Um, current roster only? Is that, what we're, is that how we're scouting yes. our team? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I, w I would definitely take Moose 
on my team, given his um, almost insane athleticism. Um, let's see who else. Um, maybe Sally. Sorry, Sammy Callahan, because I. I mean, I, I've seen what he can do with a baseball bat, and as terrifying as it is, I would rather have him on my team um, rather than on the team against me. <laughs> um, who else would I take? Those would definitely be my my two, my first and second round draft pick. Um, and as much as I don't care for her as a person, you've got to give it to Tessa Blanchard. She's incredibly talented and and athletic, and I'm sure that, that she would be an ace on my team as well. So um, I will put my personal feelings aside, and I will choose Tessa Blanchard for my team also. Hi, this is Paul Boron from Two-Faced Wrestling Talk. I'm just curious, uh, what are your goals that you're setting uh, this time around and anybody in particular you're really looking forward to working with? Um, my goals this time around were to come into Impact Wrestling, um, sit at the um, announce table and call the action for these incredibly talented women. Um, my, I didn't have intentions of coming back and wrestling, um, but you know it's something that's that's still in my blood. And obviously, in my times away from Impact, um, I've still been competing on a regular basis. So you know, that's a question that I've been asking myself a lot in the last couple of days. Now that I'm here, now that I've, um, you know, I, I did that. I stepped back into the ring. Um, I allowed myself to come out from behind the announce table. So now that I'm back. Um, I'm still evaluating what my goals are. Um, my first uh, goal is to make sure that this division, something that is near and dear to my heart and something that I helped to create, um, continues to be run on the fundamentals that were there in place in the beginning, and that's respect and hard work and not bullying, hence why I stepped back into the ring in the first place. Um, and I feel like if I'm if I'm going to commit to this, it's going to be um, go big or go home. So first, as was announced last Thursday on Impact, um, my short-term goal is to go into under pressure on May 30th and defeat Tessa Blanchard. And I would argue that after I do that, I would be in line for um, a knockout title shot. Manson, how are you? This is Brian from the High Spot Podcast. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. Uh, talking about you know evolution and, and basically your short-term goals, I mean, if you could talk real back about reflection as well, because your early years in Impact and where you are currently now deciding to come back, where would you rate yourself in terms of an in-ring performer and an on-air talent compared to where you were right from the beginning when you started with Impact? Um, I would argue right now that I am probably at the peak of my um, in-ring performance, um, which after all this time feels like uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy to me that I've um, been able to continue doing what I do for as long as I have. But I've always been uh, of the opinion that you never stop learning. You always, you continue to be a student of the game and as, you know, like we've been talking about, women's wrestling has changed and evolved. And if the participants in that don't change and evolve as well, they're not going to succeed. So I feel like I've done a very good job of studying my craft, changing up my move set. You know, that's the one thing, um, you know, baseball teams and football teams, they watch tape, they watch film, they study um, their opponents. If I'm continuous changing and I'm constantly changing and growing that's impossible for my opponents to study um, so that's where I'm at right now um, I'm training a lot in the ring I'm training a lot outside of the ring I'm changing things up I'm bringing new things into my moveset I'm also confident um, in who I am as Madison Rain I'm confident in my skill set 
I'm confident in my goals. Um, so I think that that may give me a bit of an edge over some of these new up and coming knockouts. Um, but I definitely feel like I'm in the best shape of my life, both in and out of the ring right now. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Madison, we'll go to an email question from Duncan, who writes in, who have been your favorite women to wrestle throughout your career? Mm. I have had um, countless opportunities to be in the ring with people um, who have forced me to grow and forced me to step out of my comfort zone. And the ones that come to mind right away are always Gail Kim, um, Mickey James, Angelina Love. Uh, and I can only imagine that um, Tessa Blanchard is going to do the same thing. And I love being able to step into the ring with women who challenge me and push me outside of my comfort zone um, and make me really have to work to get a victory. Um, but yeah, I think that the first time I ever felt like, oh my God, this is, um, this, this is a big feat in front of me was um, with, with Tara, um, with Victoria, when she came to Impact Wrestling um, in my first year being there. She definitely was the first one to grab a hold of me and throw me out of my comfort zone. Um, so I always, I always thank her for that. But um, Gail and Mickey, um, Angelina Love, um, all of those women have really helped um, form me as a performer by forcing me to be my absolute best every time I was in the ring with them. Hi, Madison. This is Tommy from Hills and Quads Wrestling Podcast. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. All right. So my question is, is with the current surge, as I like to call it, of women's wrestling, what intrigues you the most about your return to impact? Is it matches you haven't had with different opponents? Or is it what we think will eventually happen, your record time knockouts championship run? <laughs> um... Well, this time, you know, every time that I come back to Impact Wrestling, it's planned, it's calculated. I come back um, with a very clear vision of, of what I'm doing. And, and like I said, being in the ring wasn't exactly um, what I thought I was coming back to do. Um, and commentary is something that I really love and has really challenged me in the short time that I was able to do it. So. Um, I was excited to do to do that, but I mean, at the end of the day, wrestling is what brought me to the game, and it's what's going to um, clearly what's going to keep me in it. So, um, you know, like like I said earlier, this division it reminds me a lot of the division that I stepped into in 2009. It was a lot of young, hungry women who all they wanted to do was wrestle and make their mark. Um, in women's wrestling history. And so for me to be back now um, and to be able to be in the ring with people like Kira Hogan um, and Tessa and Allie and Sue Young and Rosemary and all of these women who are just as hungry now as I was then and continue to be um, because, you know, I want to be my best every time I'm in the ring. I think that that slightly trumped um, my goal of, tying that record um, as a six-time knockout champion is really getting in there and testing myself and having those moments um, like I did with Gail and like I did with Tara and Nikki where when I get back at the end of the match, I self-reflect and I'm like, wow, that match, um, it really made me grow as a performer. Those are the moments that I look the most forward to at this point in my career. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Madison, we're going to go to an email question from James who asked, what did you learn in your earliest days in Impact and how do you translate that into 2018? Um, I'm not sure that I learned it at Impact, but I learned it through um, the opportunities that I've been given at Impact. I started with Impact Wrestling when I was less than four years into my wrestling career um, and I was 22 years old and so to be just catapulted into 
um, my dream job at such a young age. I, I felt like at that point I had two options. Um, <laughs> I could be wild and crazy and 22 and, and live like a rock star, or I could be very humble and smart about the way that I was going to um, let my career unfold. And, um, you know, it, it was instilled in me at a young age to always remember where you came from and where I came from is a spot on a map that you can't even find until you get into central Ohio. <laughs> so um, I think the thing that has given me such longevity in my career is to just always remember where I started, um, where I am in the moment, and to be thankful for it. Hey Madison, this is Jeremy Bennett with Sports Kita. It's it's great to to talk with a fellow diehard Chicago Cubs fan. Yeah, hear that, Ross? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James, oh just disconnected your call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what are your thoughts on a potential feud with Tessa Blanchard, and have you faced her in the ring before? Um, I haven't. Actually, I've shared many locker rooms with her. Um, you know, we've been at Shimmer together several times. We've done a couple other independent shows together, um, but I've never actually been in the ring with her. So I'm really excited. Um, I know that she, like, I've studied her. I've watched her. You know, she's making such a buzz, such a massive buzz. Like, she's making her mark um, on women's wrestling um, in such a big way. And so for me, those are the kind of opponents that I need. Those are the kind of opponents that I want. Um, because at this point in my career, um, I feel like, for me personally, um, I want to prove to myself that I still deserve to be in wrestling, that I still deserve to be in the knockouts division, which I hold in very high regard. Um, so the idea of having a feud with her is it's exciting to me um it pushes me to work really hard <laughs> to be prepared for that because you know like i talked about a few minutes ago i wear a lot of different hats i'm mom i'm wife i'm entrepreneur i'm student i'm all of these things outside of wrestling um and tessa's out there every single weekend she's working every week she's constantly in a different city in a different state you know wrestling is her life and that's amazing and it's exciting for me to watch somebody as young and talented as she is um but i don't i don't live life the same way tessa does so i'm hoping that in the moments that i do wear the wrestler hat and i am preparing and i'm i'm getting my body ready and i'm getting my mind ready that that those moments are enough to compete with the constant moments that tessa is preparing Thanks, Madison. Thank you. Uh, first, a quick note for the media. Yes, to those who have uh, texted over to me. Yes, you may get back in queue if you have a second question. But uh, we're going to go to uh, Jerome, who emailed in. What do you think is missing from women's wrestling in 2018? Um, <laughs> I don't know that I would say there's much that's missing i mean and that's a good problem to have that i can't answer this question i think that this is such an exciting time for women's wrestling and that over the last several years it's grown so much um and i think that it's so diverse um not just you know within the the top companies in the world but i think across the board um it's diverse it's exciting I think that you've got a lot of everything that you could possibly want in wrestling. You, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to answer this because I don't know that there's anything that's missing. And I think that for fans, that's, that's amazing. Sorry, I wish I could give a specific answer, but I, I just feel like it's such an exciting time in 2018 with, um, for women's wrestling that I, I'm struggling to find something that's missing. No, that's good. That's a good answer. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Hi, Ryan Bowman from the <clears throat> Hi, Rob. 
You uh, you talked about uh, your work on commentary in the past, and you've even worked with the very talented Josh Matthews. Uh, so my question for you is, could you see a, a woman doing full-time color commentary calling both the men's and women's matches for a major company in the future? Absolutely. Um, and I would like to throw my name into the list of suggestions for that position. Um, I will say this, and I, I was completely blown away by this. It, commentary for me when I was starting out um, was harder to be good at than wrestling was. Um, and it, you have to be so emotionally, uh, mentally involved from the time you put that headset on until you take it off. And then you've got to be quick. You've got to think on your toes. You've got to be knowledgeable and, and educated. Um, so, you know, not just for the very talented Josh Matthews, but for um, <laughs> anyone across the board who who does commentary. Like, it's given me a whole new level of respect um, for the position. And I absolutely think, especially in times when women's wrestling um, is so prominent, that having a female voice um, not only could happen, but should happen. Thank you. Madison, we have an email question from Us Man who wants to know, you seem to be in even better shape now than when you left. Have you changed your training regiment in recent years? I wonder which time he's referring to when I left. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, actually, I have. I've um, changed up my, my training um, quite a bit. And I, I don't go to the gym six days a week. I don't lift super heavy things and put super heavy things down anymore. <laughs> um, I, I've kind of transitioned into more of a, a maintenance phase as it relates to um, the way that I train outside the ring. Um, I do a lot of um, boxing classes, which makes me feel like, um, like a total badass, if I can say that on here. Um, <laughs> So I do a lot of that. I do a lot of yoga, um, but I've, I've trained my I've changed my training in terms of I don't go into the gym and train like a bodybuilder because after I was a bodybuilder briefly, I realized that it it, it hurts my joints and I wake up tired in the morning. Um, so I, I train to stay in an athletic. Um, I, get, I just I train to stay more athletic than what I train to see how much I can squat or how big I can make my bicep. Hey Madison, this is Jeremy Bennett again with Sports Kia. So uh, as I I'm going to ask you a Cubs question at the behest the, the behest of Ross now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is your your favorite all time Cubby? And, and also, how did you celebrate the uh, the World Series win in 2016? So, um, <laughs> I'll be totally, totally transparent because I don't like those people that say, like, I'm a fan of this, but they're not really. Um, I'm not a stat person. I'm not a, you know, I'm like, my, I got into baseball and I love the Cubs because my oldest brother um, has been a massive Cubs fan his entire life. Um, and I've known about Ryan Sandberg since I was about four years old. Um, he's, the, my, he's the reason why I played second base in, uh, in, uh, when I was a kid. <laughs> okay, then you and my brother would get along well because I remember posters of him hanging in my brother. Like I, my brother was a very, very, very talented um, baseball player too, um, and he loved the Cubs. And so I, I felt like he was an expert. If he liked the Cubs, I was going to like the Cubs. Um, but... I didn't, there was a time, you know, like in high school when, when prom and my hair and my nails and all of those things kind of superseded uh, watching baseball. And then as my wrestling career kind of started to take off, I wasn't able to follow along um, as much as I would have liked or as much as I do now. Um, so when asked who my favorite all-time cub is, I'm going to go um, real recent and I'm going to say, uh, you know, this the team of, Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo, they're just, they're a lot like, you know, like the 
the young, hungry, talented knockouts that we've been talking about for so long. They're talented beyond their years. Um, and I like to watch that, those two specifically because it was the two of them um, collectively who got that last out in Game 7 of the World Series. The way that they celebrated, the way that I celebrated in my living room with my husband and my daughter looking at me like, what, what is wrong with you? What's going on? <laughs> and then I called my brother and, and we screamed over the phone and we were excited. And I'm sure that, that in saying all of this, the entire state of Ohio is going to disown me now, um, considering the way that the Cubs won the World Series. But that's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, the, the game the game seven was definitely uh, nerve wracking, especially when it hit the rain delay. I was a mess. I can't even go go back there in my mind. Like I have goosebumps right now talking about it. So yeah, I I totally totally understand what you're saying. And you know, funny story, real quick. When I I came, um, I wasn't living in Ohio at the time, but I came up here for the weekend, and I walked into a, a Dick Sporting Goods in Columbus, Ohio, and I walked in, I said, do you guys have any Cubs jerseys? And I, oh. like, it was like, <laughs> like everything in the world stopped and everyone just turned and stared at me like I had committed the ultimate sin. And I was like, oh no, okay, I, I got it. You guys have, have Cleveland stuff. Have a great day. <laughs> and I quickly walked out of the store. Oh no. Thanks a lot, Madison. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Stephanie for Searcher Magazine again. Sorry, I was shaking, but we have a big storm uh, outside and I'm, well, I'm shaking. Well, um, my question was, um, what, uh, to what extent was it important for you to have this freedom to come to impact, uh, to, 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 to be wherever you wanted, whenever you wanted? What, what's the question? I'm sorry. What? How do I like? I mean, you, you 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 come to impact. You can you come back. Um, you came back many times, and things like what is important for you is to um, to be the um, how do you manage to carry your career to 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 be able to to choose the place you want to be and to be an impact when you want to be in. Mm -hmm. Um, so again, that's another, um, I guess evolution more of the sport, not so much women's wrestling, but that in 2018, um, you know, people have the option of, of doing like what I do and, and having that freedom, um, and not being contractually obligated one way specifically. Um, and so with that freedom, it's great. Um, it's exciting. It's kind of, I'm, I'm, I, I, the pen has been put in my hand and I get to um, creatively write this chapter of my career. Um, but with that freedom, it's also very scary because, you know, I, I spoke about this um, on an episode of, of Josh Matthews' show, Around the Ring, um, that being free to go where you want is, incredible but it also feels nice for a company to want to put their stamp on you um and to give you a contract and so that you have that one home to go to um so there are there's there are ups and downs to having that freedom and, and with that freedom it means that you have to make the right choice for yourself and your career every time like you can't have an off day where you make the wrong decision um you have to know you know, and, and that just goes along with, with having a vision for yourself and your career and goals and things that you want to accomplish. Um, but overall, having that freedom to, to do the things that I want to with my career at this stage in my career has been great. And to have been welcomed so many different places with open arms um, has been tremendous for me, and, and I'm, I'm humbled by that. But at the end of the day, Impact Wrestling um, has always been home for me, and they treat me as such every time I come back. That's why I was trying to ask you if Impact is your own. Um, well, they sure make me feel that way every time, every time I come back. 
and we love to see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madison, we're going to go to the email question from Caden, who writes in, who is your toughest opponent, and how did that uh, person's physicality equate to potential matches with Tessa, Taya, Sienna, Kiera, uh, other wrestlers who are very physical? I mean, in terms of the most physical opponent that I've ever had, I don't think that there will ever be anyone more physical than Awesome Kong. <laughs> um, especially considering my first match ever at Impact Wrestling was with Kong. So it was definitely a, they threw me into the deep end and said, sink or swim, kid. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm five foot three on a good day if I stretch in the morning and about 115 pounds, so there aren't going to be many opponents um, that I face that are going to be my size or smaller. So have, being at that strength um, disadvantage is something that is a challenge that I faced my entire career, so I feel like I've learned how to maneuver around it, and um, it, exactly in doing that, maneuvering around it. So um, the big ones, the tough ones, the strong ones who can throw me from the ring to about row 10, um, I just move around them quickly enough to not give them the opportunity to do that. And the thing about Tessa um, is that she is petite, but she is just as strong as someone twice her size. So um, I'm excited to get into the ring with her. And I, I am going to go out on a limb and say that um, this match with Tessa is going to challenge me um, just as much as any match that I ever had with Gail Kim, um, and that is putting Tessa in the highest of high regards because Gail is tremendous and I would argue one of the best female wrestlers of all time. Hi, Ryan Bowman from thegrillposition.com and lifelong St. Louis Cardinals fan. Boo! <laughs> I'm from Southern Illinois. We're kind of 50-50 in this part of the world. Okay, I just I just remember I have to take my dog outside, so I'm going to have to go right now. <laughs> but I have one, one question for you, one last question. And obviously you get, you've got the issue right now with Tessa, and you've talked about what she brings to the table. I guess, uh, can you reveal any strategy, and do you think you guys could steal the show at Under Pressure? Um, I absolutely think that we can and will steal the show, um, and that's coming from the most humble place possible. I just feel like with Tessa's in-ring skill and my in-ring skill that um, I'm hoping that from a fan's perspective that it's nothing short of magic. Um, and my strategy in getting ready for for an opponent like Tessa is the same strategy that it was for, you know, well, the, the times that I got in there with Gail or the times that I got into the ring with Mickey, and it's just to um, sharpen my skills, to learn the skills, to not let her watch a couple Madison Rain matches on YouTube and have me completely figured out. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, I'm the veteran in this match. I'm the one who has been... Um, backed into a corner and several more times than Tessa could have ever been and I've had to fight out of that corner um, and I think that that's going to give me an edge. I think the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, I've got something to prove to myself and that I still belong in this era of knockouts um, is going to give me an edge and the fact that I'm just not going to let her get her hands on me. She ran away from me at the uh, in the 10 seconds that we were in the ring together last Thursday on Impact. So if that's any indication, then that magic I spoke about, um, it may be short-lived. That match may be over pretty quickly. Madison, Kimmy writes in, who inspired you to become a wrestler? My two older brothers, 
did because they used to watch wrestling um, and then they would want to practice wrestling moves that they saw on the TV on me. So if I didn't figure out how to counter them, then I was going to be in big trouble. Um, <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that's the true answer. I used to watch wrestling with my brothers and my dad when I was little. So that was where um, the idea, the seed first got planted. Um, but I think I mentioned this earlier, maybe not. Uh, the first women's match that I ever remember watching on TV was Alundra Blaze and Bull Nakano, and they are they are the two women that I credit for um, captivating me the way that um, a, a little girl who decides what her dream is going to be and, and then chases that dream um, becomes captivated by something. And, you know, all these years later, I still remember that match, and I remember how it made me feel. And so I, I would credit those two women for being – the, the first and biggest inspiration for me to want to be a wrestler. All righty. Well, Madison, we were going to wrap it up, but I do have one other question came in from Mr. Miami. I'm not sure if that's his hint to you, but he wants to know, who is your NFL team? Uh, <laughs> um, admittedly, I, I do love football. Um, and for a long time, I was a New York Giants fan. Um, I, I don't watch it as much, but in the time that I spent living in Nashville, um, I went to countless uh, Titans games. So I'm going to say that if I had to choose a team, um, that it would be the Titans. All righty. Well, Madison, with that, I appreciate it. Your time has been uh, much appreciated, as always. And uh, before we wrap it up, we'll give you the floor for a, a final thought. Absolutely. Thank you, Ross, uh, for having me on this call. Thank you to everyone for your questions. I hope that I uh, gave them answers that um, exceeded your expectations. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled, honored, and humbled at the opportunity to be back at Impact Wrestling. Um, and I'm excited for everything upcoming. I'm excited to have that uh, much-anticipated match with Tessa Blanchard at Under Pressure on May 30th. Um, I'm also excited to return to Impact tapings on June 1st and 2nd um, in Windsor. I will also be at the Zero Fear one night only event on June 3rd, as well as uh, the press conference just announced today that will take place in Toronto on June 4th. Um, so I have a busy, busy um, summer coming up with Impact Wrestling that I am incredibly excited about. So thank you guys all for your questions and your time today. You got it, Madison. Thank you very much. And media, once again, please remember, after next uh, next week's Impact, email your questions. We will broadcast those questions from you guys at the press conference uh, June 4th in Toronto. Thank you again. We will talk to you next week.